Hello, everyone. Um, we are on day three of the semester so far, so we're just getting right along. Um, thank you to everyone for doing the um, initial discussion to check in. Everybody did in this class, amazing. Um, so I'm very glad you're all gonna be with me for the rest of the semester. Um, don't worry, I know it's a difficult topic. We will get through it together, I promise. Um, and if you have any questions as we go along, please let me know. Again, I'm not gonna be able to be there for tonight for reference hours, um, but please feel free to, if you need to meet through via Zoom or one-on-one, -on -one, let me know, I'd be more than happy to set up a time with you. So today we're gonna be doing a very short um, lecture conversation on um, Cutter's rules. So um, Charles Lemmy Cutter, here I found this beautiful picture of him, can everybody see that? That's Charles Lemmy Cutter. He, I uh, was excited to hold it up, but um, he was born in 1837, um, went to Boston Divinity School, was appointed the assistant librarian um, for the Divinity School between 1857 and 1859 um, at Harvard. Um, Harvard's um, catalog was from 1840 and it didn't have any order. It was basically just go find a book on the shelf, right? Somebody had donated that this guy, Professor Godfrey Christian Frederick Look, um, had um, donated 4,000 um, books. They literally had no organization for others sitting on the shelf. You think about that. I mean, seriously, just like coming into a library where there's 4,000 books and just being like, sure, we probably have something on philosophy, right? Um, I, that's crazy to me. Anyway, he's, so Cutter um, put together his three rules um, to help that any um, library should be governed, should, should organize under. Um, they're still in somewhat practice today. They're generally in practice is what I'm gonna say. They're, um, the foundations are definitely there. They're definitely the same. They have definitely improved and changed a little bit over time. So his three rules were to enable a person to find a book which either the author is known, the title is known, or the subject is known, right? So I can go find an actual book. The second rule is to show what the library has by a given author, by a given subject, or given kind of literature. His third rule was to assist in the choice of book. As to its edition, bibliographically. Oh, I like lost half of that. Oh, no, take that back. Or as to its character, the library topic, sorry. So those were his three. Um, so the last one, again, is to assist in the choice of a book as to its edition, bibliographically, or to its character, the library topic. So those were his three um, rules. So here's what they meant. Basically, the first one, the um, to enable a person to find a book of which the author, title, or subject is known. So that is to be able to go and to find an actual resource that you know the either the author, the title, or the subject, right? So I want to find a book written by Stephen King, right? I know this. I'm able to go find a book written by Stephen King. Now, his second object is um, to show what the library has. Now, in this case, it's the gathering of information. So I want to find a book by Stephen King. I should now be able to go this by a second rule and to find every book that Stephen King has that the library has, right? So do I want uh, Pet Cemetery? Do I want Christine? Do I want one of his short stories? You know, what do I want? I want to be able to see every single thing that the library has that's written by Stephen King. That's his second rule. The last one is... Um, the to assist in the choice of a book. So the last one is to be able to find the book that meets my best resources. So I know I want a book by Stephen King. I've now found all the books that we have that the library um, owns that Stephen King has written. Now I'm going to go find the best book that I want, right? For my, maybe I'm starting, I want to start reading his books from the beginning with Carrie and read them all the way through. Maybe I heard about his latest book that I'm going to go read. Right, it really, you know, it just totally depends what that patrons, but they're gonna go choose the best resource for their need. So from Cutter's rules um, came the Ferber um, rules, which is, um, they came out of the International Federation of Library Associations. Um, and basically these are principles based off of Cutter. They're 
newer. They're from 2009. So they're, they're newer. Um, to find, and basically it's to enable a user. These principles enable a user to find a bibliographic resource in a collection, to identify a bibliographic resource or an agent, which is entity is responsible for the resource. So basically the author, right, in this case, to select a resource that is appropriate to the user's needs. So to find my, this last one, to acquire and obtain the resource, not just be able to select it, but to actually be able to go and get the resource. And then to navigate within a catalog and, and beyond that, right? Since the catalog is now generally online, um, somebody was saying Altadena on, did you see that in the discussion? Altadena's library still uses their card catalog. Um, if you're not familiar with that, if you've never seen one in person, I highly recommend visit Altadena. Apparently there's, you can look through. Um, yeah, I was not aware of that. Um, but yeah, so if you're not familiar with an actual card catalog, go see it. Um, they're fun to look through, kind of. Yeah, I think they're fun, but that's maybe my librarian showing. Um, so again, um, Ferber, Ferber is an abstract conceptual model. So it's a little bit broader. Header's a little more, um, you know, exactly. Um, whereas Ferber's a little more conceptual. So again, um, they're kind of the foundations, Cutter, which led to Ferber. They're the foundations of locating a material. And that's what we're doing in cataloging, right? We're creating the records by these rules so that we have you know, our author title subjects. We can click on a subject and, um, or we'll go to a catalog, a card catalog even, right, and look up a subject, um, look up, um, you know, it depends on the subject headings that you're using, look up, so let's say a candy is a subject. We find candy in the subject settings. Every material that we have that has candy as subject heading would come up in that. Um, so we just need to make sure, you know, so that everything is organized that way. That's what we're doing here. Um, we'll get into this a little bit later. This is a little more. So I was gonna go over a couple of things and how that relates to the catalog. I think that might be a little, jumping ahead and confusing. So we're not gonna do that. But there's different fields in your MARC record that relate to different things, um, which we will get into later. So we're all good. Um, so yeah, so that is Cutter. Um, you you will actually you'll actually hear about him quite a bit later too. He's, he did the foundations, but he also came up with what is called as the Cutter number that's part of cataloging. Um, so well, there's a ton of different kind of classification systems, right? I mean, there's literally a ton of them. There's, you know, a ton, I don't even know how many there are, but there's a lot. Um, and so Dewey is the one that a lot of people know. Well, also a lot of people know like the Library of Congress. So they're probably two of the most popular ones, at least here in America. Um, so Dewey is based off of, Dewey based his off of a framework of 10, right? So there's, 100, 200, 300, 400, and then there's subdivided by 10, by 10, by 10, right, underneath it. So the problem with Dewey is it's limited. So you could have two books, um, totally different books, but they could have the same Dewey number, just because of how it's set up, because there's only so many numbers in Dewey. Library of Congress, not as problematic as that happening, but it could theoretically still happen because it's still limited, although it's much broader. So the cutter number, um, it allows you, and we'll, you'll actually learn more about this later on, but it'll actually allow you to add a unique identifier to the material so that it's, so you don't ever have two exact call numbers. Um, because, you know, if you have two exact call numbers, well, that's great, but they're two different books. So you, they're the only time they should have, a book should share a call number is if it's a second copy or that item should have a second copy. So uh, we'll learn more about the cutter number later on. Again, Cutter's kind of the one of the foundational people to current libraries. Um, so yeah, but his three um, his three objects of the catalog enable a person to find a book, to show what the library has, and assist the choice of the book. So again, those are kind of his um, foundations. Um, so let me know um, again if you have any questions about the class. I am here for um, to help you out. Um, I will help you out to do with anything that you need. So I'm gonna look really quick. 
Um, the only thing in addition that you need to do is to make sure you do at least one original post and um, one reply in the discussion. And then make sure you read um, the chapter, the second chapter that's due today, that's due this week. And then again, uh, Monday is Labor Day. We do start technically on Monday. Um, I know it's Labor Day, so have a happy Labor Day. Um, the class does technically start on Labor Day. And then we'll get into a little more of the specifics next week on actually how to catalog. Again, let me know if I can be of any help for to you. I cannot set up an appointment. Um, office hours will again resume next week. Tuesdays and Thursdays, four to six. I go. I do apologize about this week. Um, but yeah, have a great Labor Day, and I will see you guys later. Bye.